Uh, my name is Farhan Rahman. Um, I've been working with Tony Salimi for just over a year now, or just a, around a year now. And it's interesting, like, I've spent all this time hearing many, many things and hearing Tony repeat the same thing over and over and over again and bring my attention to the same thing over and over and over again. And it's pretty much taken me a year to get to a point where I think I've finally heard part of what Tony's been feeding back to me. And I guess the kind of that awareness, which, you know, like looking at the alarm methodology that's part of TJ's evolutionary method, that awareness of the fact that Tony was repeating things and that I wasn't getting it or understanding it. Like I had a sense of it, but today for the first time, I really kind of got it. Like I really understood there's something that I'm not understanding that I need to put more attention to. And like my focus was about trying to be really clear, trying to establish a level of awareness around what it was that I was being directed to. And it took a while, and I'm very grateful to Tony for having the patience working through that with me, because I know that he's had to repeat himself many times until I got to the point where my awareness allowed me to perceive that. And from that awareness, I literally, it was like a light bulb went on. I had a moment of awakening, the second step in the first part of the alarm. And that awakening was really around that realization of the behavior or the actions that I was doing on a consistent basis. Um, and just to give some context here, what it was and what it is, because I've not completely resolved it yet, but I've, be I've become more conscious of it, was that I'd be asked a question and I would give an indirect answer. So... If I'm being asked um, what's happening with your leg, I'd start talking about what was happening with my life. Or if I was being asked, um, you know, do I want a banana? I'd say, oh, I'd love a drink. And I was never giving a direct answer to the question I was getting. And the biggest awareness piece for me was really when I had that awakening realization, that moment of insight, that actually, first, I was doing it. So that it was happening and that I was doing it, I went from becoming aware that there is a problem, something isn't wor working, something isn't right, to then that aha moment of, okay, this is what it is. This is what it's about. And actually kind of the much deeper awakening that I had around that, the much deeper insight that I had around that was really the fact that I'm doing it to other people means I'm doing that for myself even more so, right? Like, I am consciously making a choice or a decision and then questioning that in a completely different context or appropriateness. So as an example, last night, I went home and as I was driving home, I was very clear in my mind, I'm going to go home and I'm going to go straight to bed. And then I spent an hour distracting myself and that decision that I'd made of, I want to go straight to bed, and then that hour that I spent distracting myself, it wasn't deliberate, but this is how I've been operating in the past, that I will create something different to what it is that I've asked or said for myself. And so from that awakening moment of kind of that aha moment, I started to become more alert I just, Tony con constantly kind of was interrupting me and drawing me back and kind of making me focus. And it was almost like he was acting as that alertness for me that I should have had inside of myself if I'd been able to consciously perceive that of what it was that I was doing. And I guess part of that was just because I hadn't understood it, I needed that outside help to see what was going wrong inside of me, what was... What was the thing that I need to become alert about? What was that thing that is kind of 
hello, here's the alarm, here's this thing that isn't right that you're doing and going off track. And I guess it's often the case in life that when we aren't able to understand or integrate that ourselves consciously, our environment gives that feedback to us. And so, you know, I was having a coaching session, so it was much simpler. Tony recognized it, he perceived it, and he, you know, he brought my awareness to it. He started to give me some context so that I could wake up to what that was, but then he constantly brought my attention and he just kept bringing me back to that point of alertness of, look, you're doing it now, you're doing it now. And that's not how he said it, but just the way that he was directing my attention, I constantly became alert of something's not right. I'm not doing something quite right. And as that attention, which is, you know, the next part of the pillar, was constantly being brought back, it brought my understanding of it to a degree that allowed me to see it. And in a way that I've never understood it before. So, and my family can attest to this, and some of my closer friends who know me really well, that I have a way of beating about the bush. I have a way of kind of going around in circles. Like the analogy that, you know, someone very close to me has shared is that if, if, if I can hold my nose this way, I'm going to try to go all the way around my head and behind my back and around the corner and then get to holding my nose. And it's like, but I can just hold my nose. And that attention that I get distracted with and go off in all sorts of directions, I've seen that in so many areas of my life. Like, I'll sit down, perfect example, right? I'll sit down to do some work and I'll be like, these are the things I want to do. Five hours later, I haven't even touched those things. Like, I've gone online, I've gone on Facebook, I've checked my emails, I've done everything but the things that I wanted to focus on. And it's almost like that's what's happening with my attention whenever I'm distracting myself. And so in recognizing that and coming to a point where I finally saw that that's a pattern, that I was constantly being alerted to when that was happening, and that I was finally able to use my own attention on it, not other people's attention to constantly feed it back to me, but really I was able to find my own way of putting my attention on it, that it made sense to me. Um, and, you know, Tony kind of gave me a little analogy of kind of walking around in circles and suddenly it clicked for me. And, you know, I'm sorry, family. I know I've been doing it my entire lifetime. I've only just understood what you kept going on about, right? And I'm 30 plus, so you can imagine, there's been many years of frustration with siblings and stuff, right? But so now that I have an awareness of it, and I've become alerted to the principal mechanism behind that behavior, now I can take some action, and I can actually start doing something about that. And that alertness was a prerequisite. Without being alert to it, without being able to see it clearly, I wouldn't know what action to take. I wouldn't know what it is that I need to do or address. And that's not to say I've got all the answers. That's not to say that I understand it. But now that I've acknowledged it, from seeing that thing, seeing that behavior, seeing how by becoming aware of the behavior, by awakening to that insight that actually this is a problem, by going through the process of becoming alert to when that's happening and recognizing those moments, to getting to the point where I'm able to finally absorb that and acknowledge that and really start to accept that that's happening within me, that acknowledgement, it's almost like, um, like with AA, right? The first step is to acknowledge that you have a problem. And it's like, but before I could even acknowledge what that behavior was or be aware of when it was happening or be alerted to when that was occurring in my experience, I needed to start off with 
that there is something that needs to be addressed, right? That awareness that something needs to be addressed. And I needed to have that insight about what that is. I needed to awaken to that principal challenge of how it manifests and what that what form it takes. And so now that I've acknowledged that that pattern exists, I'm aware of it, I understand how that fits together, I've become alerted to when that's happening, and I'm able to finally acknowledge that it is something that's important, now I'm in a place where I can start taking some action. Now I'm in a place where I can start really doing something about what that was. So if there's ever a time where you're not ready, and if there's ever a time where you're confused or not sure of what's happening or why something's happening, I strongly encourage you to start becoming aware of it. And if you need some support or a structure to help you take that awareness and do something with it, Tony's book just summarizes that. Like, his methodology, it's all of that. It's not just the first step. Like, you know, what I've talked about is really kind of where I'm on my journey right now with the issue that I'm addressing. But really, Tony's book, Path to Wisdom, to really kind of help you unlock that and understand that. Like, you know, I've worked with Tony for a while now, and I've really started to appreciate just how much his methodology gives a structure to allow me to start unbundling what's inside of me. Like, I'm constantly given the feedback, not just from Tony, but from other people I meet, random strangers that suddenly I have conversations with, that I have so much wisdom, I've got so much that I could give or share. And I know that everybody has that, and perhaps I'm being given that feedback because that's what I need to focus on. But really, the book, the methodology, like, that's my manual. And it's a manual which I've neglected purely because I wasn't ready to do the work and because I didn't understand what that meant. But now that I'm starting to see that, like whenever I'm not in my sessions with Tony, I'm gonna to be using that as my guide. I'm gonna be using that as my handbook. Um, so, you know, Tony's book will be coming out soon. He'll be publishing it on the 10th of April. And I strongly encourage you to go check it out and you know, if you get the chance, come to you know, Tony's book launch on the 10th of April in London or get a copy of the book online and, um, you know, start walking that path to wisdom for yourself because, trust me, like, it's taken me a year to get to this point and I know that if I'd put the conscious decision earlier to get to that point sooner and I'd had the book as soon as I'd met Tony, I would have been able to work through all of this much, much quicker because I'd have had the awareness much sooner. So, yeah, I just wanted to share my perspective and my insight. Now, just the last thing I wanted to talk about was just how, for me personally, I've only been able to get to this point because I've valued myself enough to spend the money on what's important for me, right? And knowing that I wasn't getting the results that mattered to me, I had to find someone that had an understanding of what it was that were my challenges or my bottlenecks and help me work through those, right? And I've had many coaches and mentors in the past and not all of them are right, yeah? Some of them, they'll take your money but they won't necessarily give you the value. And so it's really important to, if you are gonna invest in yourself, you need to start by asking yourself that crucial question. What's important? What do I need to focus on? And when you're clear about what that is, you need to go and find yourself a really good coach. Obviously, I would recommend Tony because I've been working with him and I've been seeing the benefit and the results for me. But the investment that I've made, it isn't the money I've spent with Tony. It isn't the time that I've spent in my coaching sessions. It's in the decision that I made and the commitment that I made to myself before I met Tony, that I was going to find somebody of a standard and of a quality that's on a par with what I think is the best I can find, right? 
And I've worked with loads of people that claim they're really good and they produce the results. And I'm sure they have produced some results for some people. But in not seeing the consistency or the congruency in a lot of the people that I've spoken with, a single conversation with Tony over a coffee was enough for me to recognize this guy, he really gets it. And because that was what I needed in the coach that I was looking for, I chose Tony in that way. So if you're looking for a coach, go and find somebody that you resonate with. And if that be Tony or if that be someone else, make sure you're making that decision based on what you need and that you invest in yourself. Because the investment you make in yourself is going to pay back a lifetime of return versus anything you could ever do by trying to get it from outside in. So thanks very much. And um, I hope this has inspired you because in talking to you, it's inspired me in just how far I've come in my own journey.